Hey, what's up guys? Jordan's here once again. And yes, I ditched my Red Komodo 6K R3D RAW global shutter portable Super 35 cinema camera for the Canon EOS R3. And here is why. I literally ditched my Red Komodo 6K RAW cinema camera for the Canon EOS R3. And um, just a little on my background, I have personally owned the Red Komodo 6K for a little over a year and a half, almost two years. And obviously I have paid it off. I have shot various projects with it from music videos, documentaries, interviews, um, feature film I've shot, literally four feature films with this camera. And so obviously I have paid it off already. And even then up to now that the camera is almost two years in release, well actually over two years um, since its release, it's still on a high demand and there is still a whole queue on back order. People are still waiting for their deliveries to turn up. So it tells you that the camera is really, really on high demand. It tells you that the camera is very versatile and people are actually um, after this camera. So it's been a good three months um, in deciding whether to get rid of it or not. Um, I've thought about it several times and each time I'm this close in listing it for sale, I decide and then change my mind. I've had a word with a very close friend of mine um, and he's obviously advised me and, you know, he's saying all sorts of things like it's very on high demand and um, if you sell it, you're not going to get it back again. And, you know, and it all makes 100% sense. But why did I end up selling the Red Komodo? Um, there are two key features and two main reasons why I actually sold the Red Komodo 6K or rather in other words, ditched it for Canon EOS R3. Yes, the Red Komodo has global shutter and you know, it's very nice and nimble, compact and portable to carry around and do many things with it. And besides the fact that it's red brand, you know, it's vastly popular in the film industry. And so people recognize it as soon as they see the branding on there. Now, um, I sold it, number one, because of the autofocus feature. So I've shot several projects with it. Um, when it comes to narrative work, film, you know, it's just the camera to be. But um, when it comes to um, other projects like interviews and uh, music videos, especially music videos, because I do a whole lot of that, um, the camera hits its limitations. I only ever wished that RED had moved the autofocus feature from beta mode to standard at least. Um, nevertheless, I'm not saying that it's bad, but in comparison to a Canon um, EOS R cinema line, for my reasons in regards to shooting music videos, um, it doesn't work. It is good for, you know, um, a sit down and talking heads like this, but obviously you not buy a cinema camera just solely for that purpose but because i shoot various um, projects i needed something that will be able to work well in my field of work so um, i believe after waiting for over a year and a half and you know the autofocus feature still being in beta mode and now that you know the v raptor has been released and um there are production going on i'm pretty sure for the dsmc3 uh this strictly means to me that red has abandoned the autofocus or the red komodo totally in all this is my personal opinion because it's been over a year, it's literally been over two years to be precise since the Red Komodo was released. And we know that it's meant to be a crash cam and we know that it's not meant to be um, in compared to um, Sony or Canon autofocus. 
but at least remove it from beta mode so that we know this is the capability of the camera. And then people can decide, is it good for me or not? So I have been waiting all this while and not idle, but definitely working um, with the camera, you know, on um, big projects and, and so on. But I was so looking forward to the autofocus getting a little bit better than it is, at least some sort of a tracking feature, if it's possible on the um, sensor, get some tracking feature, which will make the camera a whole lot more versatile and it will leap it into a whole different ball game altogether. But unfortunately, after waiting for so long, none of these things has been addressed and the Red Komodo is still as it is from day one. And so um, it comes back to my needs, what I needed the camera for. And again, I'll emphasize and keep emphasizing it's paid off itself with various projects that I have done, but I wanted to keep that camera for so long because it does everything, almost everything perfectly well. And so unfortunately, uh, my five year claim of using the Red Komodo has come to an end. One morning, I just woke up and thought, you know, I'm going to sell this thing. And then I just listed it online. As soon as I listed it, within three hours, someone came and picked it up. Hmm. Was that a good decision? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below if that decision was good because under three hours, someone picked it up. That tells you how this camera is actually sought after. And um, I unfortunately got rid of it um, for a decent price because I didn't want to hold on to it. I've got uh, music videos that are lined up to be shot and um, I've got a feature film that is still um, about to wrap up, you know, and I was mainly concerned with the music videos because what was happening is, you know, you having to manual focus and I always work by myself because I don't have a focus pull as much as I did have a focus pulling kit but I never had a focus puller. So I was doing everything by myself, a one man band, and it was getting frustrating after a while. So um, having this Canon EOS R3 and the powerhouse autofocus feature, after shooting a music video that I did recently, I realized how much I was missing the autofocus out of a camera like that. Now, as you can see with this um, shot right here, there are three, four people in the background, but you can tell that the main character that has been focused on is tack sharp and slight blur to the people in the background. And literally this just sticks on right there and then, no matter whether the character moves left or right or comes forward, it allows me to just play with my framing rather than focusing on the autofocus feature or to focusing on the manual focus um, in compared to the red Komodo. So I'm able to move forward, back and whatnot, and the character is still tack sharp in focus. You know, having said that, I am not losing a lot besides the R3D RAW. Um, the Canon RAW is as good to me, obviously it lacks the small features of manipulating certain things. However, it's both at the same resolution, 6K. Now you're probably wondering, so why didn't you pick up the R5 or the R5C? The R5 is out of the equation for me altogether because of the overheating limitations. Now the R5C does also overheat, but at a certain point, which really and truly doesn't affect my kind of workflow, but the size of the camera is more or less a very standard DSLR kind of um, look. I'm saying this because if someone pays you a good budget to come on their project to come and film for them, you don't want to turn up with a small DSLR kind of look. And so um, the R5C was not good for me. Having said that, most of the features from the R5C has been transferred over to the EOS R3. Um, making this a much more better camera for my kind of needs because it is a much beefier camera, a taller camera, and if rigged well, you know, it does fall in the cinema kind of line. Again, having said that, nowadays, most cameras are branded C for a cinema, but really and truly, is that what it is or is it the person behind the camera? So this camera, um, a few things that I actually really, really love out of it is number one, 
the LCD screen, the sheer size of the LCD screen and the resolution and the quality that the LCD screen projects is. I'm not 100% sure whether it's the same as the R5C. I believe this is the best in the market so far when it comes to mirrorless cameras and DSLRs LCD. Now the size of this is practically like a cinema 4K DCI um, aspect ratio. So it's very huge and you can frame very, very well and you can also see details on there. Besides that, it doesn't end there. Um, we know that it's articulating, but this huge EVF that comes with it as well is practically the same as the LCD that you see at the back. So in harsh conditions, which really doesn't affect this LCD, but let's say the worst happens and you can't see on there, you can use this huge um, EVF that has been built in to frame your shot. That is if I'm not using my Zacuto Gratical X. So um, these two features powered with um, the autofocus feature just makes this camera so versatile. And I understand a lot of people are overlooking it because perhaps the price is a little bit out of your reach or you don't wanna spend as much on a DSLR. Now, on the other side of things, when it comes to photography, I love the burst mode on this camera. This shooting more than 30 frames per second, literally you can't miss any shot with comparison and the autofocus feature in this camera makes this camera versatile. And yes, you're going to say, but the Canon R5C and the R5 shoots 50 million pixels. But you know, that 50 million pixels compared to the 24 million pixels and the stacked sensor style makes this camera, if not the same as the R5C. I have done some comparison in regards to the photo images and resolution and uh, quality, and literally there are no difference whatsoever. So um, this has now become my new go-to camera kit to film both feature film, music videos, documentaries, interviews, and so on. Let me know what your thoughts are. Was it a wise decision to get rid of the Red Komodo 6K or um, I should have stuck with it? Now, just to wrap up, I am not a person that is strictly bound to a company or a brand when it comes to gear. Um, I am not a red lover, I am not a Canon lover, nor am I a Sony or Blackmagic lover, but rather I love any camera that comes with features that are suiting in my needs and my workflow. So that's it for me guys. Hopefully this explanation and reasons for ditching my red Komodo 6K makes sense to you. If it doesn't, do leave a comment below and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.